Now, I'm a dad. Right? I'm, I'm a father. Not the godfather, but I am a father. <clears throat> and God has blessed me with seven amazing children. I like to think so. But I'm sure my children would agree. Uh, we have Daniel, Luke, got Amber, Josh, Jessica, Sky, and uh, Crystal. When you have more than three, it starts to affect your memory a little bit. <clears throat> and every one of them means the absolute world to me. They truly do. <clears throat> Even though they may show subtle similarities to myself or their mother, you know, they've all got their own personalities, their own characteristics, their own way of doing things. And I'm so thankful that God the Father is nothing like us earthly fathers, although we, we do a pretty good job, you know, we try to. Because us earthly fathers, <clears throat> and, and as a parent, so I'm not just talking about dads here, I suppose I'm talking about mums as well, but as a parent, <clears throat> I make mistakes. That's probably hard for my kids to accept that, but I, I, I actually do occasionally make mistakes. You know, sometimes I don't, maybe I might not listen like I should, or I, I probably get a little bit, uh, you know, like I react the wrong way if I'm angry with one of my kids, you know. And I may get angry at times. That's alright. It's where, you know, correction and things like that come in, I suppose. But I might react the wrong way. I make these mistakes because I'm human and I'm not perfect. I know, I'm not perfect. Despite what you're saying, kids, I'm not. Okay? Bless the Lord. But despite all my mistakes, all my flaws, all my shortcomings, and all that kind of thing, when all is said and done, I love my kids. I love my kids. Even when they've done the wrong thing. Even when they've done the wrong thing, they've said the wrong thing, they've made those wrong choices. Even in those times when they annoy the living daylights out of me, yeah, I still love my kids. No matter what, I will always love my kids. Always. <clears throat> I love when my kids tell me that they love me. I know my kids love me, but I love them when they tell me. You know? And I'm sure any parent out there would feel the same. They come up and they go, love ya. You know? My kids, you know, even Daniel, where is he? I can hear him, I can't see him. <laughs> oh, there he is, stand up. <laughs> even Daniel, who was actually uh, 26 in about a week and a half. Just thought I'd announce that. Even to Daniel, 26, I mean, all, all my kids do this. But even Daniel, my oldest, will come up to me, give me a hug, love your dad. I love that. He'll give me a kiss on the cheek. I, I absolutely love it. I think that's awesome. No, that's so cute, Daniel. Where's mine? They call me Dad or lately it's Papa. You know, I'm actually starting to warm up to it for some stupid reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I think God the Father, I think God the Father loves that too. I think God, I mean, we can't give God a kiss and hug, but we can certainly uh, tell God we love Him. You know what? And this is kind of, you probably think this is stupid, but when I'm by myself, I like to go, I love you so much, God. And I just think to myself, I'm just giving God a hug. That's my way of giving God a hug, because I can't physically do it other than hug myself. <laughs> Although the story I read is about the lost son, it's also about the love of a father for his children. The son had gone away, and the father was experiencing separation. From, from his son, 